stop blaming William. Harry's greed, combined with Meghan's despicable actions, destroyed the royal brotherhood. Hello and welcome back to our Royal Family News YouTube channel. Both Harry and Meghan have such a sense of entitlement and have no humility. Now, most people with character flaws like these at least have the common sense to try to hide them from the world for a while, but that seems to be something Meghan and Harry are incapable of doing. I mean, it's really amazing when you think about it. Privileged people playing victims are never frowned upon, but given that there are people in this world right now dying trying to escape war zones or climate disasters, their complaints become incredibly offensive. One of the issues that people are talking about right now is this. What do you think Harry and Meghan really want from William? So, to discuss this issue, I collected some reviews from public platforms, most people agree that he just wants money. Maybe he wants a prominent position for himself and Meghan. Maybe they want more impressive titles. They want to live somewhere fancy. Of course, all paid for by the royal family or the government, and they also want the family to apologize for the way William treated Meghan. But even if he got all that, it wouldn't be enough. He will just ask for more and neither he nor Meghan will be willing to do anything. Meghan will want free designer clothes and the right to wear all the royal jewelry she wants. He will never stop with these two, and as for the breakdown of William and Harry's relationship, I mean, William is probably more responsible for that than Meghan. Harry said some really vile things about his family, and showed how jealous he was of William and his Netflix documentary, and then he went on every platform available to him, like radio, television and podcasts, to complain about his life as a prince and the royal family. And all this happened before we even had any free time. I mean, he accused William of physically assaulting him. He really haunted Catherine in a bad way. And then he did all these interviews to promote his whiny book, now, of course, Meghan must account for many of her own sins to the royal family. But it was Harry who decided to jump down the rabbit hole with Meghan. And he is responsible for his bad behavior towards his older brother, who has always been there for him. And he just tried to support him and help him all his life. It was William who encouraged Harry to seek therapy, it was William who bore Harry's trauma following the loss of his mother. And it was William who tried to warn Harry to take his time with Meghan. But no, no, Harry didn't want to listen to his brother's advice. And why? Why did Harry have such a problem with William, maybe because he didn't get the same amount of sausages? Harry is so jealous of a situation he can never change. He must be even stupider not to realize that even being born second is a real honor when you are born into a royal family and automatically become a titled prince. And I understand that there are good and bad things about being born first or second or whatever. But in Harry's case, he doesn't show a single ounce of respect towards his father, the king. Harry's inferiority complex really rules his life, and it's his biggest problem and that was really stopping him from behaving as he should as a prince. I mean, who on this earth would have such a problem being born as a second prince? I mean, he was incredibly lucky to be born into such a privileged family, but he's incredibly ignorant. He and Meghan think they've suffered a major blow, I mean, they're two spoiled kids, very spoiled, and they can't see the forest because of the trees. In every family, the firstborn usually gets a little more. They get it first. And Harry thinks they get second place because they like William more. It has nothing to do with that, however, this is a common feeling among many middle or middle children. This is certainly not a problem exclusive to the royal family. And Meghan encouraged these feelings of resentment in Harry by telling him that it is his birthright to be William's equal and that he should fight to get what is rightfully his. Harry has believed these lies ever since. Harry dreams of co-ruling with his brother, but apparently does not understand that such a thing does not exist in any country. It's not like Harry can stomp his foot and throw a fence. Alright, in light of my video on royal relationships, let's take a look at the comments on this video about Mike Tyndall teaching Meghan a valuable lesson about podcasting and how royals connect with each other. First of all, I want to share with you a comment from Kitty Fan. I loved it in the commercial trailer when Meg said that no one knew her. 
And shouldn't we take the story from the real person, Megs, we knew you and your Spotify stream just proved us right. Megs was also photographed behind the wheel of a giant, gas-guzzling SUV. The Harkles don't own an electric vehicle? So much for the eco-warriors. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts, Kitty, I had the same thoughts when I heard Megan say that, oh, if you want to hear our story, shouldn't you hear it from us? Maybe this comment would have made more sense if they had actually told the truth about their story instead of putting so many lies into this stupid set of documents. And then I thought the same thing about her driving these gas guzzlers who I thought were supposed to be climate change warriors. I suppose not. Another comment that I really liked was from Blue Russia 933, is how the royal family should be, having fun and relaxing. Mike Tyndall has a deep love for the entire royal family. Well, not Rasputin or Harkle. The look on Mike Tyndall's face at the Queen's funeral scared Harkle to death. Oh yes, he should be scared. I mean, just take a look at Mike Tyndall and take a look at Harry. It's pretty clear who would win if they faced each other. I'm so happy to see there are more Mike Tyndall fans. That's what Irene Hutchinson says, I really enjoyed watching them all. I'm so glad Harry and Meghan were never mentioned. Me too. And then Janie says, the laid-back nature of this group is so much fun. Aren't they funny? Wouldn't you just like to spend time with them? And then Sheila White says, I love it Mike and the other guy were great. I love seeing Princess Anne, the Prince and Princess of Wales. They were so good, relaxed and fun. How family should be. God bless them, God truly bless them. And you're right. This is how family should behave towards each other. They should not try to compete or betray. They should just be happy to be together, always enjoy reading these Corgi Love comments. So Corgi Love says it's been a lot of fun watching the interaction between the Royals and Mike and his co-hosts. You can just tell they're so passionate about the sport, you can really tell how genuine they are and I think that's what makes it so different from Megan's podcast. I also think Ellen Ritt made a very good comment. He says, notice again how Kate sits back and lets the blood royals take center stage, she's not trying to upstage Princess Anne. He knows he wouldn't be here if he didn't get married. Very mature. I agree. That's something I've always really admired about Catherine, Catherine, I don't think she's someone who wants a lot of attention for herself. She is more than happy to work hard for the cause close to her heart. And at the same time, she is more than happy to be a good support to her husband, as well as the rest of the royal family. And so it should be. Okay, now back to Harry and Meghan, I know, I'm sorry, but we have to get back to work. So these two scheming swindlers brought no value to the House of Windsor. In fact, they're much more like a cancer to the good people of the United Kingdom, and Charles and Queen Camilla would be doing the world a favor if they ended up discrediting them both and throwing them overboard. Meghan and Harry will never give up these crowns themselves. They will continue to cling to it with everything they have, like a piece of dog poop on your shoe, they told so many lies, especially in that Oprah interview, I mean, accusing the royal family of racism. They made money by being so terrible to the royal family, trying to destroy them. But they have only done the opposite, because now they are hated by so many people, and they are trying to make as much money as possible by filing lawsuits against anyone who dares to oppose them. They thought when they arrived in the United States they would make a lot of money selling cosmetics and yoga clothes, who knows what else, all under the royal banner. Well, apparently their plans were so secret that the palace knew nothing about them at the time. In fact, it was the media that warned the palace. And when the queen found out, she was visibly angry. Harry knew this went against everything the monarchy stood for, which is why he kept it a secret. And it was then that he realized that he was completely unreliable and could never represent the monarchy again. They never wanted to live in silence. Come on. They wanted to create an alternative royal family in the United States and that is the reason for this horrible campaign against the family. But the creation of a rival royal family in the United States S would never have worked. Both are so delusional. 
There has only been one co-regency in the last 400 years and they intermarried. And one of them was the next to be born, now if he really wants half of everything that is real, he is living in a fantasy world on many different levels. And even if it were possible, it would never happen because Harry is a hypocrite. It is so unfair. It turned out he had no morals. He totally lacks diplomacy, discretion and decorum and no one could ever take him seriously. Having him represent the UK would be an absolute disaster. So maybe he needs to go somewhere where he can be king of his own castle and live the life he says he wants away from the royal family. But the poor late queen, her diplomacy, discretion and decorum for over 70 years was second to none. And he had to endure Meghan and Harry, as well as serious illness in his final years, Meghan is so greedy too. That will never be enough for him. And Harry allows it, I mean, everywhere, all over the world, for people to do for others with the little they have. Meghan is a monster. She's a selfish narcissist, and she's a very poor excuse for a human being. But I hope that one day, they will have their reward. In fact, this is already happening. Now, I think Harry is a lot less in love with money than Meghan, so he doesn't need as much money. He just wants to be able to live a relaxed life, doing whatever he wants. Smoking marijuana and taking mushrooms. I don't know what else. And it's not like anyone is making Meghan and Harry look bad. They do a great job on their own. They were so desperate to be seen as victims that they made up a story about a near-fatal car chase in Manhattan, mean, come on, no one believed it? For reasons we still don't know, they got out of the official car with tinted windows and got into a yellow taxi in which they probably risked death, which was news to the taxi driver and the local police. There's a good reason we never hear about passengers dying in New York City taxi accidents. They can't travel fast enough. Their credibility took a serious hit, they are so desperate to stay relevant. So I think it's best to leave them alone. They are much more successful than anyone else at hanging themselves. They are getting boring now and so repetitive and without new credible allegations against the royal family they will be major failures. They have nothing else to offer, anything new from them against Harry's family will raise some pretty interesting questions about why they didn't talk about it sooner otherwise it will have to be so scandalous as to be completely unbelievable. And you, what do you think of them? Please tell me your thoughts below in the comments section and we can also talk about Harry and Meghan and the royal family. And don't hesitate to subscribe to the Royal Family News YouTube channel for more updates in the future. Once again, thank you very much for watching, good night and we will see you again tomorrow.